Welcome everybody to Drone Education Services. Today on our daily drone report, it's October 7th, 2021. I'm so excited to bring to you some of the news of the day. So what is the news of the day today? Let's see. Today in the news, we've got a capstone event at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and DARPA is going to be showcasing how a single user can control 200 drones. Now, you know, DARPA stands for the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, and it's a agency of the United States Department of Defense. It's responsible for the development of emerging technologies for use by the military. Now, Northrop Grumman is going to be the one that's going to be testing the equipment. So let me give you a, a neat little grammar lesson right now. Have you ever heard of swarm grammar? Swarm grammar stands for the ability to take your tablet and draw on the tablet a sketch to direct the drone. And so the drones will be following what the sketch on the tablet is. Can you believe this? A single user can control 200 drones. What do you think the capabilities of that for the future are gonna be? Let's head into Tales from the Air. Now, Drone Education Services is going to present 500 flights and counting, and this is episode number four, Goodbye Stumpy. Now, what do we have here for Goodbye Stumpy? Let's check it out. Well, it's going to be another ground-based day. I didn't take it into the air. I, it had been now about a couple of weeks since the teardown and probably a week since the little tello flew off and landed on somebody's roof. So I realized that, you know, in order to take this project a little bit further, I was going to have to just start throwing some things in there. One of the things I needed to throw in there was I need to start developing some flight patterns. Uh, the big oaks still had to be cut down uh, and the stumps were remaining. So it was amazing to me to watch that skid steer just running into those stumps and pulling them out of the ground. You know, a hundred year old oak tree, it just takes a matter of minutes to take it out of the, out of the ground. It's just amazing to me how something so majestic and bold can be just removed so fast. Now, Skid steer was also uh, defining a lot. And what was amazing to me was that they were taking the excess dirt and they were either sticking it into a pile or they were dropping it into the dumpster. Now, dropping dirt into a dumpster, that, that seemed like it was crazy to me, but it was an all day project and they had formed a lot. The cool thing for me though, was that in the process of trying to figure out how I was gonna film this, I started to shoot from multiple angles and I started to shoot the same thing from multiple angles, such as, you know, the clearing of the lot. I could shoot it from different angles and then I was able to stitch together to tell a story. And what it was starting to appear to be was that it started to look like that I had multiple cameras going at the same time. And what I started to notice is that the same process could be in its fifth or sixth iteration but it still looked like the same thing if I stitched it together correctly. I knew that this was going to turn out to be a fun project. Our next slide are Tales from the Air. Now, Tales from the Air are places that I've been and things that I've done in different states and different locales. And I'm just going to tell you a story. So today's story is going to be in Colorado. I got a chance to fly off Flatiron. I had a seminar scheduled for August 11th, 2016. So I flew in on August 10th and my buddy Rodman uh, Schley picked me up at the airport and he's like, hey, you know, I've got a great place to fly. It's at Flatiron and it's just outside of Boulder. So we jumped in the car and we drove past, uh, uh, you know, the airport's devil horse where the, we've got a big statue of a horse out in front of the Denver airport that's got ruby red eyes scary looking as all get out but we drove about 45 minutes up to flat iron and we parked the car and we walked out to one of the trails and 
was able to get my unique Q500 into the sky and I was flying it around. It was absolutely beautiful. What a perfect day to fly. And one of the things that happened on this day was that I actually got a wind gust coming over the top of Flatiron and it grabbed the drone and it started to drive the drone into the ground. And I looked at Rodman and I said, oh my God, dude, this is going to be it. That's it for my drone. Well, the drone caught itself and took itself back up to its original position. Now, after I had landed after the first flight, some park rangers showed up and they said, listen, if we catch you flying the drone, we're going to have to find you. Well, I wasn't in a national park, nor was in, I thought was in a space that I couldn't fly drones. And I said, you know, well, listen, you know, I don't think that, you know, we're, you know, breaking any laws. And he goes, if you put the drone in the sky, we're going to find you. So I just said, well, I guess we're not flying today, even though I was able to get the footage that you're seeing right there uh, first. So I'm just really glad they never saw me fly.